Do you guys know about Euler's theorem? Um, what is an Euler's theorem? Okay, so if you have like n and a co-prime, yeah, yeah, and then phi of n is the number of things which are co-prime to n, yeah. Number of uh, sort of x less than n, for which x and n co prime. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, for example, if n was like 5, right? Yeah. Then 1, 2, 3, 4 would all be co prime to 5. So then 5 of 5, five, five would be 4. Okay? Wait, how did you calculate five again? Oh. Like, it was like take so the there's prime. like yeah, you got to take the prime factors and you subtract one. Okay. Yeah, so if if, the if it's two. primes like p to the s times q to the t times r to the u, like these are three prime powers, yeah. yeah. And how phi works is it just takes it takes them individually, so you can do them separately, yeah. Okay, and what it does individually is it just decreases the power and the prime by 1. So it's p minus 1 times p to the s minus 1. Okay, q minus 1 times q to the t minus 1. And r minus 1 times r to the u minus 1. Yeah? Right. You understand? Yep. Yeah. So you might want to do an example, maybe like what's 5 of 36? Yeah. Uh, okay, that's, that's, um, two, two, two squared and two squared. Yeah, so it's 5 of 2 squared times 5 of 3 squared, yeah? So that's 5 of, um, I mean, that's, um, it's 1, okay, that's 1 times, uh, what do you call it? Uh, just, uh, 8. No. So that's 2 times... Two times uh, six. Okay, so that's a two, yeah. Yeah. Okay. And this is this is a six, yeah. That's supposedly twelve, yeah. Yeah. Or you can kind of start counting, like like one, two and three are not co-prime, right? Four is not co-prime. So five is next. Seven. Six is not co-prime. Seven. No, I mean nine, ten, no, eleven, yeah. Yeah. 12, no, 13, yep. 14, no, 15, no, 16, no, 17, 17. 18, no, 19. 19 is 10, right? Yeah. Uh, 23 and 29. 31. That's 13, then. Hmm. Okay. Oh, did you have 23? How does this work? Hmm? How does what work? This function works. Yeah, so this is how this function works. We're counting the number of things which are co-prime to 36. Wait, what will we get up to? So 1, 7, right? 11, 13, 17, 19, 23. 29, 31, 31, 31. 31. Is that right? Do we get 9? Hold on, 1, Okay, let's just start. So 36, Five, seven, got 1, 5, five. Seven. Seven. Oh, 25 blocks. 17. Oh, 25. We missed 25, yeah? 23. 25. Oh. So we missed 17 here. 19. 23. 23. 20. 29, 31. 25. Oh! And 35. Wait. Yeah. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 12, yeah? Yep. Yeah. Okay. So we missed 35. So, so at some point, you I guess you try to start just counting the primes, huh? But the ones, these two multiply together. 
Okay. All right, so what's Euler's theorem? Okay. Euler's theorem is a to the 5n, right? Yeah. Equals 1 mod n. But why? Yeah, we'll prove that today. And why, do, why is this important? Oh, why is this important? We did in the holidays. Do you remember why this is important? Modular. <laughs> so I guess it's hard to appreciate it's important unless you do tons of modular rhythmic calculations, yeah? So remember when we did modular arithmetic? Like once when you first learned modular arithmetic, you suddenly became like you weren't scared of big numbers anymore, right? Like some huge number just modded to nothing. You know what I'm saying? Right? E like even if it was like seven to the power of five or something, and you could take mod three, you're not afraid. It's just one, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're not afraid of the seven being a big number, okay? And you're not afraid of there being a power, right? But we were kind of afraid, even though we might not have admitted it, that the power could have gotten big. Yeah? Because when the power gets big, it's still kind of... Because you can't do the modular arithmetic on the power. Wait, you know, oh, this was, one, this was for, like, um, finding out what... Oh, yeah, what, this is the five thing. Yeah. This is what? This is... Yeah, okay. So if oh, this yeah, became, like... This, this was in, uh, if this became, like, 5,500, right? I mean, that was Then this be becomes difficult to do modular arithmetic on. Okay, you know, not like not impossible. You can still chip away at it pretty quickly, right? But the problem is the power is not something which you can directly take mods on. That makes sense. But then, but okay. when you have this, okay. Yeah, okay, so basically if it's mod n, right? Yeah. And you just take five and then you get some multiple of it. Yeah. And then you subtract it from five thousand. So basically, you can take mod five n on the power now, right? Yeah. That's what this is for. Yeah. Because if five n was like twelve, right? You just have to take 55, 555,000 mod 12. You know what I mean? And that's that'll kill the power straight away to something small again. You know what I'm saying? So, whereas when we're just doing normal modular arithmetic, we're dealing with the base, multiplications, and small powers and additions, right? When we have Euler's theorem, okay, we can do big powers. Okay? So this is like... So Euler's theorem, there's a special case of Euler's theorem. When n is prime, yeah? What's 5n? Well, 5 or prime? Wait, hold on. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Yeah, it's just one less, right? Because every number up to the prime is co-prime to the prime. Yeah? Or if you look at the formula, it's just p minus 1, right? And then this is a 0. Right, Okay, so if you do a to the p minus 1, it equals 1 mod p. Okay, and this is called Fermat's little theorem. It's a consequence of this. Does Fermat have a big theorem? Uh, maybe it's just Euler's theorem. Uh, Fermat has a last theorem. Oh, no. Okay. So this is probably an easy one to do. And that. So basically, what the whole point of this is, when you're doing modular arithmetic, you can take a big power and it doesn't scare you anymore. Yeah? And actually, it, it even tells you something about the smallest power that makes A1. Okay? Maybe I'll go into that right after. Okay, how do we prove this? So the proof is kind of cool. Um... I erased this, yeah? Yeah, okay. Do you remember what the result is now that I've erased it? Yeah. Okay. Proof. So it's a pretty cool proof. So if you consider, if you multiply everything, so it's mod n, right? So let, let, let set, this be the set of all the things mod n, yeah? Right. So it's zero, one, two, um, to n <coughs> minus one, yeah? Yeah. Okay, and then let, let's have another notation. Star. So all the things which are co-prime, which are co-prime to um, so co-prime to n, yeah? Yeah. So it's no longer got zero, it's just got one, um, you know, it might, may or may not have two depending if n is even, yeah? 
So basically, it's all the it's all the b in b mod n z such that b and n are co-prime. Okay, makes sense. Yeah. So it was the it was the twelve things. If it was thirty six, remember? If it was thirty six, then we had the twelve things. Okay, and the size of this set is phi of n, right? Yeah. Because that's the definition of phi. Okay. So here's something really cool. So if you multiply, so you take this set, right? Yeah. And you multiply everything together. Okay. Yeah. So let's call it the product of b's, yeah? Such yeah. that b is in this set. Okay. So you multiply it together, yeah? Okay. Then, then I want to multiply the whole thing, okay, by a to the power of 5n. Okay. Make sense? Yep. Okay. So what does that equal? So notice that there's, how many, how many b's are there here? How many? Five there's 5n, right? And that's how many a's I multiplied into it, right? Yeah? So there's actually one a for every different b, yeah? Right? Why don't we just multiply that the a's under different b's together? So you can do it right like this. That makes sense? Yeah. You just put, put you spread the a's out. So the multiplication, it doesn't matter what order you do it. So you spread the a's out one b at a time, yeah? Okay, I'll do an example for like... I don't know, if we can do an example of 36 or something, or something. yeah? Okay. Okay, so the cool thing about this thing is, right, if you have one fixed A that multiplies all the Bs, okay, yeah. then what you get is you get exactly the same set of things again, but in a different order. Does that make sense? Say that again. It doesn't make sense. So if I multiply... The, all these, if I multiply this set of numbers, right? Yes. Every one of them by A, yeah? It creates a different set of numbers. Then I get the same set of numbers back, but just in a different order. So, for example, 1 would go to A, yeah? B would go to B, A, yeah? But I would get eventually the same set in a different order. Wait, what? How does that work? How does I... that work? Ah. Oh. Okay. I can explain that in a few different ways. Okay, but let's keep that in our minds for now, yeah? So basically what I'm actually saying is that this product here, right, is actually equal to the product um, just of the b's, yeah? Because if I'm multiplying them all again, I should get the same answer, right? If they're the same numbers in a different order. Okay. Wait, so are you saying that a, B will always be nothing in the set. Yeah. But how can that be? How can that be? Right, so, you have say, so, so, so say, okay, so there has to be a largest member of the set, right? Yeah. Yeah, if we but multiply, then, but if we multiply that, by, multiply that by, like, it'll be greater than arithmetic. Oh, but it's a modular arithmetic, so it goes back down again. Yeah. Oh. 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 Yeah. So a and so, oh. yeah, so we're considering these sets as modular arithmetic sets. So that just has n minus one numbers. Yeah. Okay, so and then, oh, uh, <clears throat> wait, why is the, um the so there'll be there'll be duplicates in the second set? No, there won't be any duplicates. They multiply to themselves. Like, so if A is co-prime, then... No, no, no. Yeah, so let's, for example, see if there's any duplicates, right? So if there's like a B and a C, yeah? Yeah. That are duplicates. That means what you're saying is A times B equals A times C, right? Yeah. And then that would imply that, see, the A's would cancel, then B equals C. So there wouldn't be any duplicates from different B's and C's. So that would be loops. Mm. Okay, so I'll, I'll establish that a bit more clearly Wait. soon. But can you see what happens if it's true? So look at what Wait, happens if it's so true. 
So the second set, that isn't the set of, of all of the five head, but that's just them. This one, yeah? Yeah. So this is all the ones, I said, essentially they're the ones which are invertible, okay? So the ones that go prime to n. Yeah? But they're all smaller. Yeah. So then what did that do to fire with? The number of things in there, yeah? Yeah, the number five of things. Like... Yeah. So that's why there's five and a's here, yeah? Wait, hold on, hold on, I think I'm stuck. What did I do? What, what did I do? Hmm, I think I can fix a and Okay, so if this is true, right? If this is true, this is equal to that, right? And you see, that's the same as that, right? Mm -hmm. So if you could yeah. cancel it, yeah? What would you get? A5. A5. Because of what? That would prove it then, right? Okay, so let me just go through this a bit more. So, alright, let's take an example, okay? Do you remember that it was the N and A co prime, yeah? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, let's do a small one first because it's easy to do small ones, and then do thirty-six, okay? Five and three. You then do five and three. Five and three. So n equals five, a equals three. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So what's z mod five z? Yeah. What does it mean? It's zero, one, two, okay, three, square zero, four. Yeah. When you take out the, when you put the star on it, yeah. And you just want the co-prime ones. You just lose the zero, yeah? Yeah. Yeah? Yep. Yeah? And five, five is equal to four. Oh, I get it. See? Okay. And what happens if I times... Okay, so now I times three, okay? To every single one. To everything in here, yeah? So one goes three, to three, one. two... So one goes to three, yeah? Goes to one. one. Two goes to six, yeah? Goes to six one. is just one mod five, yeah? No, we're doing one. You're a big brain. And then three, three times three is nine, three. yeah? Wait, wait, no, no, no. Four, yeah? And then that is two. Four times three is twelve, yeah? Uh, Which is twelve, two. So you get the same thing back in a different order. Oh well, yeah, that has to be because, um, because they all, they're all different mods to start with. Yeah. yeah. And then since we multiply them by a constant, they'll be different ones when they come out. Mm. Yeah, so one way to see it, actually, if you know about functions, yeah? But you can actually think of this as a function, multiplied by a, yeah? Yeah? And a function has inverse function. It's multiplied by oh, a. Oh, I get it. Yeah? yeah. One. So, if it has an inverse function, it has to be one-to-one -one correspondence. Okay. That makes sense? Yeah. yeah. And then we're done. Okay, and then you have to check that when you multiply these things together, you can actually cancel it. Okay, but they're all co prime. So you can cancel each one individually even. Okay. Wait, because then if they multiplied to make a non co prime. One, the, they wouldn't be co prime. Yeah. Because the result would need to divide something. Yeah. So and it like, needs to be in one of. Yeah, the, like one of the the prime that needs to make it non co prime never got in there in the first place, right? Okay. Does that make sense? So in general, like, what do I even mean by A inverse, right? Like, in modular arithmetic, so inverse means it, it reciprocal. So if I have A times 1 on A, right, I get 1. Yeah? But that's like normal maths, yeah? If I'm talking about modular arithmetic maths, then this is equal to 1 mod N, right? So it's just up to a multiple of N. So it goes back to that theorem. Remember when you have, like, A and, like, um... You have a and n co prime, yeah? yeah? Then you can find x and y such that there's a solution to this equation for integers, right? And that's exactly what it means for x to be the inverse of a mod n, right? Because you take mod n here, okay, then you get ax equals 1 mod n, right? Yeah. Okay. So basically, this set are exactly all the things which can be inverted mod n. Yeah. Okay, so that proves Euler's theorem.
Yeah? Okay. So one nice thing to know about it is, have you heard of the order? The order of A mod N is the smallest power. Smallest power. For which, it's the smallest power of K for which A to the K equals 1. Yeah? Mod N. Mod N, yeah? Make sense? Alright. The smallest power k for which a to the k equals 1 would end. Okay? So, I, the, so this order actually will always divide. It will divide any power for which it equals 1. Okay? So in particular, it always divides 5 n. Okay? Does that make sense? What I'm saying? Why it makes sense? Because, um, so, so the smallest power that makes a one always divides five n. Right. Power that makes a one, yeah. Well, I mean, it has to because five one makes also. Okay, so you want to see a proof of that? So a proof of that is, so five n is definitely bigger than that, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I mean, where is it? Yeah. So you can do the division algorithm on it, right? So 5n equals some quotient times the order, yeah, yeah. Wait, plus wait. a remainder. It has to divide because otherwise it wouldn't loop. Yeah. Fully. Yeah. See, look, if you do division on 5n with order of order of n a, right? Yeah. You get a remainder, yeah. Okay, but the problem is the remainder is smaller than order, yeah? Does that make sense? Yeah. So if I take a to the power of both sides, yeah? Because this is equal to this, right? Well, this thing's equal to 1, right? Yeah. Yeah? This thing's equal to 1, yeah? But this thing's equal to a to the r, yeah? That's just um... So that will give you a to the r equals 1, yeah? But then that's a smaller thing that... Yeah, so the only remainder which can do that is zero, right? Yeah. Because anything else would contradict this being the smallest. Mm. This is allowed to be zero, yeah? So this is the smallest, I guess, non-zero, if you want. Yeah, so if this is not zero, then a to the r equals one contradicts that being the smallest. Okay, so any power, any smallest power that makes a go to 1 mod n has to divide any other power that makes go to 1. Okay, so it's not just less than all the other ones that make it 1, it's actually a divisibility chain. Okay, so I think this is the point, this, this, this result Euler's theorem, I think marks sort of the transition line between AIMO number theory, okay, and AMO number theory. That mm. makes sense? Mm. So when you start, so what, when we finished AIMO, right, that's kind of when we, we like, we learn this. And it kind of also you learn this before you do AMO, yeah? Um, okay, any questions? Maybe we can get in the habit of trying to think of a question to ask. Because not everything is completely clear. Well, yeah, we could do the factorial problem. Yeah. What is the factorial? Yeah, it was like the factorial or something. I did not do the... It was inequality. Oh, we already did that one. We did? Yeah. When? Like... And even Jordan was here. Oh, was that last term? Yeah. Oh, we did it. I don't know how to do it.